Hello, I'm Austin Heyman. Welcome to Seniors Today, a monthly program produced by the Commission on Aging and devoted entirely to issues and interests of Montgomery County seniors. This month we have not one, but two important guests from NIH here to share with us a great deal of useful information. And later we're going to show the recent press conference held with the County Executive and the Chair of the Commission on Aging, Judy Wells. We begin by learning about the Baltimore Longitudinal Study on Aging, the longest running study of human aging in the country. It's being conducted by the National Institute on Aging of the National Institutes of Health. And my guest today is Dr. Luigi Ferrucci, the Scientific Director of NIA. Well, welcome to Seniors Today. Thank you. It's I'm a, so glad to be here. Uh, it's an honor to have, us, have you here. Tell us how this study is different than other studies of aging. Well, first of all, as you said, it's the longest uh, study on aging ever existed, and it was funded more than 50 years ago. But the real peculiarity about this study, the real un uniqueness of the study, is the fact that instead of comparing older and younger people, we are actually following people over time. So they entered into the study, most of them they were in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and then they remained in the study for a long time, and they came to us many, many different times. So we can delineate the trajectory of physiological and anatomical changes that occur with aging and really learn profoundly what aging is and what is the relationship with disease. And this understanding can help us a lot in uh, promoting healthy aging. Well, I, I looked into your career. You've <laughs> done a lot of research in Italy for many, many years yes. before you came here. Ten years you've now been here. Yes. Um, in this study, what are the most important things that we've learned? You know, it will, be, it will take uh, hours to, to really go through all the discoveries of this study. So I'm going to limit myself to one example. Okay. You know, one thing that we did the 30 or 40 years ago, scientists decided to ask the Baltimore Longitudinal Study of Aging participants what they thought about aging. And some of them were very positive. They say it's wisdom, you can live with the family, you have a lot of time. Some of them were very negative, and they say, well, there are disease, you're losing your friends. And at that time, all those individuals were very, very healthy. Well, if we follow those individuals for 30 or 40 years, those who were positive about aging did much better in their health. They had less cardiovascular disease, they had less disease in general, and possibly their cognitive function remained also better. So having a positive attitude toward aging seems to be working very well. We don't understand completely what is the mechanism there. How to get certain, this positive yeah, attitude. <laughs> well, the mechanism we don't get, uh, you know, we really don't understand that yet, but we will. But it is also common knowledge today, at least I think, that there are certain things that y if you do, you have a better chance of aging. Yes. I mean, there are certain certainties we have. For example, if you eat with moderation and you maintain a good weight over your lifespan, certainly you age better, you develop less disease, you develop less disability, you are much more active in aging. And also, if you exercise, that is absolutely a positive thing to do that will help you tremendously. And one thing I want to say is that it's not just uh, jogging, because people are frightened by those kind of intensive exercise. Right. Getting out of your house, walking 10 minutes per day, is a lot better than doing nothing. You know, yeah. the real difference is between sedentary state and being a little bit physically active. I mean, of course, if you can do even more, it will be better. But uh, just getting out is very, very important. Um, we also have, I don't know whether it's mythology or reality, people say, well, 
my parents live to be 100. <laughs> will, that, will that help me? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. We know for sure that people that have parents uh, that live for a long time, especially if they remain healthy up to a long time, they tend to, be, to live longer and to be healthier in older age. Yet, uh, we don't completely grab uh, the genetic factor that convey this, uh, you know, possibility. But uh, it's certainly there. Many, many studies have shown that this is true. But we also know that, uh, you know, having good parents is not all of it. Yeah. Environment yeah. and behavior yeah. really yeah. play an important role. And so yeah. your healthy aging is your responsibility. You can build it. Uh. <laughs> I wondered if in all the years that you've done research, um, if there's something that, it, it, I, it's probably hard for you to answer this, but yeah. one thing that, that jumps out at you that you were surprised to find. Well, I mean, there are many, many, again, it will be difficult to identify, well, but there's one recent finding of the BLSA. So in the BLSA, people that join the study are asked, uh, to donate their body after their death. So we can do an autopsy and uh, bring to the BLSA incredibly relevant information in people where we have been following for many, many years. So what we found is that uh, some people accumulate uh, beta amyloid in their brain. And you know that beta amyloid had been uh, supposed to be implicated in the development of dementia and Alzheimer. Well, some of them had tremendous amount of amyloid in their brain, but in fact, when they died, uh, they were absolutely healthy. Mm. They, uh, their brain was uh, functioning that perfectly. Is a surprise, yeah. So there is something in our body, some protective mechanism that we can develop to, to reduce the effect of the accumulation of this uh, abnormal substance in our brain. If we could discover that, that would really help us, uh, you know, trying to prevent Alzheimer's disease and dementia in general. Now, uh, you're about to, uh, to launch a, a new study uh, called IDEAL. Yeah, Tell us I'm what very, this. very excited about this study. So one thing that if you ask uh, many aging people, many older people, what they really want is not to live forever. Everybody wants to live a long life, but especially a healthy and functional, active and enjoyable life. So we decided to bring to the study people that have been living for at least 80 years and uh, in spite of that have maintained an excellent health. They have no disease, they're taking very few drugs, uh, they're really doing very well from the physical and cognitive point of view. And so by studying them, we can maybe able to really understand that secret. But. Uh, it's very difficult to find those people. Yeah, you want to have very, very your, rare. Your goal is to have 500. Yeah, uh, I want to have 500 uh, so I can really have enough people power. People over the age of 80. Yes, that uh, are healthy, they, they're not taking any drug, uh, maybe with the exception of a few antihypertensive drugs or some uh, drug for uh, their lipids, but not major other drugs. Uh, and uh, if they can join the study, we will follow them yearly, and they'll come to us every year and they will stay with us two days, uh, and they will get the best and most intensive medical examination well, that's and a assessment. That's a plus. That they have <laughs> been imagining. And it's, that's brain. free. <laughs> that's absolutely for yeah. free. And uh, t tell, uh, what, there's a phone number yes. that uh, you have so that if people want to so Come if they're interested in this study, I, I have a phone number here that I brought for this purpose. Uh, they can call 1-855-804-3325. And it's important that they cite they're interested in knowing more about the ideal study so they can get more information and eventually help us in this incredible project well, that, that we're launching. Very exciting indeed. Uh, um, so that will take one step further. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, the, one of the things that people are questioning always is uh, how do we understand uh, what the difference between being old and healthy and instead the becoming old with many diseases and disability. And when I had an interview, everybody asked me, what is the secret? What should I do? How do I get there this way? So you're going to tell us today? I'm going <laughs> to tell you, maybe not today, but <laughs> when the ideal study will be terminating, Look, uh, I'm sure that I'm going to tell you. We'll have you back. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. It's a 
privilege to have you with us. That was a pleasure. Thank you. When we come back, we'll tell you about a website full of health information just for seniors. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? Now there is only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's new online and telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Remember, call 311 to get it done. Have you ever parked illegally in a reserved, accessible parking space? And thought, what's the harm? I'm only going to be a minute. We know how important it is to have reserved parking. And the adjacent striped access aisles provide necessary space needed for assistance devices like my wheelchair and my service dog. Respect the need for reserved parking and the laws that govern its use. On behalf of everyone with accessible plates and placards, we are asking you to respect the space. Welcome back to Seniors Today. Even though we have the National Institute on Aging at NIH right here in our own backyard, it's not exactly convenient to drive over and get information. My next guest has a wonderful resource to share with us. Her name is Stephanie Daly, and she is a public affairs specialist at the National Institute on Aging at NIH. Well, welcome to Seniors Today, Stephanie. Well, thank you very much. Nice to be here. Well, you do have a wonderful resource because I've looked at it. Um, what will, what will uh, older adults find when they visit NIH Senior Health? Well, older adults who visit NIH Senior Health will find a health and wellness website that's tailored to their needs. It is a website that is authoritative, reliable, up to date, and it's from the National Institutes of Health. So it's something that you can trust. Well, it's, kind of, it's really amazing because I looked at it just recently. And tell, tell our audience exactly the kinds of things you'll find on it. Well, the website contains nearly 60 health topics and over 150 health videos, all geared toward older adults. And they cover topics of, of they cover diseases and conditions of aging that are commonly seen in older adults, as well as healthy aging information. For example, you'll find information on Alzheimer's disease, shingles, prostate cancer, COPD, high blood pressure, and healthy aging tips regarding how to, how to eat well, how to exercise, how to eat safely and, avo and avoid foodborne illnesses, how to take your medicines safely without overusing them or misusing them, how to avoid falls. So there's something for everyone. Wow. And these videos are terrific. Uh, you, you, mean, you, you, don't, you don't just read stuff. You can really have a, a lecture or, or, or how to do it, kind of, in the exercise ones. Exactly. The videos are designed to show older adults um, who are involved in coping with diseases and conditions of aging or engaging in healthy aging. We have videos on eating for health, uh, how to, how to um, eat well as you get older, how, what to drink as you get older, how to exercise properly. The videos cover a wide variety of topics and are very helpful for older adults. Well, now let's tell folks how they can find this. Is there, there's a website. This is a website, and the address is www.nihseniorhealth.gov. Okay. Now, most uh, in Montgomery County, I think most seniors do have access to in, in the Internet, but there are many who still do not. So is there a way of getting some of the information that you have by writing for it or calling up for it? Yes, the National Institute on Aging has many publications, free publications that you can order with a catalog. So all you have to do is call 1-800-222-2225 and ask for the catalog and they'll send it to you and then you can choose the, the publications you'd like to have delivered to you free of charge. Now, I know you've had this website and this information up for a number of years, but you recently revised it. What, what changes did you make that makes it easier, I guess, for older adults to use. We have given the website a new and modern, updated look. 
and it appeals now to people who are 60 and older who now include boomers. Uh -huh. And so we wanted to give it an updated look, and we've done that. It also includes... It's jazzier. A, it's jazzier, <laughs> spiffier, and it also includes a search function, uh -huh. making it easy for you to find information. It didn't have a search function before. Oh, the right. website was designed to be senior friendly. Uh -huh. It was designed by the National Institute on Aging uh -huh. and the National Library of Medicine at NIH designed to make it easy for older adults to use. So the type is large when you go there. You can enlarge it as well. Uh -huh. It's written in plain language, makes uh -huh. it easy to read. And very importantly, it's very easy to navigate. Uh -huh. So you can find the information you're looking for very quickly, very easily, without getting lost. Right. You, you have a clue as to what's the most popular feature there? Well, our topic of exercise has Pretty always amazing. been number one. Mm. So people are really looking for healthy aging tips and they'll find them on Senior Health. If they want to find more, they can always sign up for our email updates, yeah. free email updates that you can receive once a week that point you to extra information on the website that responds to common questions older, adult may, older adults may have. For example, um, here, here's a few examples. We sent out an email update last week, trouble sleeping? Here are 11 tips to help you sleep better. Wow. A couple of weeks ago, um, will you need long-term care? Here are some videos to help you plan. So it's important to sign up for those updates if you want to stay abreast of the well, information it's a there. Great resource. Thank you so much for coming in to tell us about it. I, I loved looking at it myself. Thank you for having me. When we return, we'll show you the recent press event held about the county's senior initiative. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean... I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that! That's disgusting! Oh, poop already! You're making me nervous! Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back to Seniors Today. We conclude today's show with the recent press event about the county's senior initiative held at the Executive Office Building in Rockville with County Executive Leggett, Council Member Leventhal, and the Commission on Aging's Chair, Judy Wells. The senior initiative is a multi-year cross-departmental project to improve coordination, community outreach, and promotion of programs designed to serve seniors, and to identify and plan for the short, and long-term needs of seniors. Uh, good afternoon. I think it is uh, fitting that we look at this month to talk about our continued focus on seniors living here in our community in Montgomery County. Uh, when our Commission on Aging came to me a few months ago and their message was clear, they stated that we needed to refocus and we needed to spotlight and maintain the spotlight on seniors. If you look at the statistics today, the demographic, you find that um, 13% of our entire population today are seniors, at least those over 65 years of age. They asked me to endorse an agenda that focused uh, a target approach on several important issues, such as transportation, housing, health care, planning, and a providing director for the county, all departments related to senior issues. Uh, it is simply something that I gladly endorse and had endorsed before, but unfortunately we had fallen back on some of the commitments that we've made and some of the things we wanted to do, but having that reminder and having that focus and having that input from people who are willing to work with us, the council and others, I think provided us with a new uh, sense of, 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 uh, of uh, inspiration to go forth now to do even bigger and better things. Because you know, beginning with the Senior Summit and 2008 that I convened, the information, the formation of a senior sub-cabinet, 
we start with apartment heads who co-chair those, um, the launching of a website focused on seniors, um, and looking at some important crucial issues that impact seniors. Uh, we have done a great deal, but nearly not enough to address the concerns that we have today. We've also come up with a senior village blueprint that came out as a result of the senior sub-cabinet work group that focuses on neighborhood work groups and others to help us to evaluate and to come up with ways in which to be much more effective for our seniors. Uh, the challenge for us, as I indicated before, was that uh, we had some real problems related to budgets and having sustainable budgets. And just like any other thing that we had in the budget, unfortunately, much of the agenda that we had outlined uh, was able to lapse. Uh, we cannot longer, we could no longer afford to do that. Uh, we have too many senior, too many issues, and the issues are so important that we need to get to them now, and we simply cannot wait. Uh, we need to get back to business, and we need to do so fairly quickly. Uh, we want to have in Montgomery County a community for a lifetime that people can age in place in Montgomery County. In order to do that, we need all segments of government working together to make certain that it happens. In this recent budget, uh, FY13, uh, I provided another down payment. I underlined the word down payment on the things that we would like to do and to reintroduce back into our budget. But we have to do much more. And so with this blueprint, this down payment in the FY13 budget, I think that it provides us with at least enough planning and some programs that we will start and to initiate in transportation and other areas that will be helpful for our seniors. But we need to do much more. So by having this focus, the energy, the, direct, the direction of today's press conference, to re-spotlight that, I think we can get back to doing the things that we want to do. That is to ensure that we have the budgetary flexibility and ensure that we have the organization in place so that as we emerge from these budgetary constraints, we're at a much better place. Uh, but as I said before, we cannot do that alone. Uh, and the county council has been an important part of that. Uh, they have provided the funds, they've held workshops themselves, they've endorsed this approach. And the person who leads the committee that oversees this has been a very strong proponent of making certain that we do as much as we can possibly do for our seniors. So I want to introduce him now, uh, the chairman of the uh, HHS subcommittee committee that deals with uh, senior issues. George, Council Member George Lefton. George? Thank you very much, Ike. Um, I'm here. I'm here on behalf of Council President Roger Berliner, who has also been uh, an extraordinary champion of uh, the uh, senior population and who put together um, a series of panel discussions for the Council so that we would be less focused on the day-to-day, year-to-year challenges of our budget and immediate policy concerns and able to look ahead to the long term. And everyone who monitors social policy and public policy knows that, of course, we seek a green future in terms of environmental sustainability. Let's hope that happens. The reality is we're facing a gray future because the population bulge that occurred after World War II is now the bills are coming due in terms of the need for all of these services that the county executive is outlining in his excellent budget and his excellent agenda. The, baby boom generation is now in need of senior services, senior transportation, shore services, senior outreach, senior centers, um, and of course uh, senior housing. And so the County Council is in full support of the initiatives in each of these areas that the County Executive has laid out. We acknowledge that this is where we are heading and we've got to plan for the future, the long-range future. Life expectancy is growing. The good news is people are staying healthier longer. The bad news is their retirement savings are not keeping up, and public policy has not adequately planned to deal with this bulge in the population. And so here in Montgomery County, as we often are, we're trying to be in the forefront, and our county executive is taking the leadership in making sure that his budget reflects our values and that our long-term planning keeps pace. And uh, again, the county council is in full support of this effort. I want to certainly acknowledge my great friend uh, Uma Alawalia and Jay Kenny, who runs uh, Aging and Disability Services in the HHS Department, and of course, um, Gabe Albernos, who does such a great job running our senior centers. And I'm very excited about the senior housing development proposed for downtown Silver Spring, right at the Purple Line, right at the Red Line Metro. It's going to be extraordinarily convenient and uh, a real uh, landmark that will show our long-term commitment 
uh, to the needs of this population. And then finally, I'm delighted with the advocacy of the Commission on Aging. Judith will speak in just a minute, and mem many Commission members are here. It is one of our very best and most effective boards and commissions, and today's um, announcement is really a tribute to their work. I don't want right at the... Um not only right at the purple line and the red line of Metro, but right next to the library. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> Judy? Thank you. First of all, I want to share with you what happened when the Commission on Aging brought a senior agenda to Mr. Leggett. Uh, he uh, gladly accepted uh, our notion of needing a plan for the future and said, I don't want a paper plan, I want action. We live in a wonderful county. We have many programs and services, and we also live in a time of a growing and a diverse population of older adults. It's estimated, he, he gave you some of the facts, and I'll just add one more, that one out of four uh, old adults will be age 60 or older in just eight years, and just, that's in just by 2020. So the Commission on Aging, in its advisory role to the county, saw the need for a plan for the future, and we developed and recommended a senior agenda to set forth a community for a lifetime, a vision and goals for a place for older adults to live healthy, safe, and vital lives. And this is a vision to address the needs of all who want to age in place, as the county executive said, or in their community here in the county. And they, they, the goals embrace the needs of older adults for transportation when they need it and where they want to go, affordable housing, choices of dwellings, public health programs for both physical and mental health, recreational opportunities for physical and mental fitness and social interaction, recognizable, understandable, timely information on county programs, promoting the value of older workers and stimulating jobs for them, and providing physical and financial protection and safety for our seniors. So first I want to say the Commission applauds you, the County Executive and the County Council, for adopting a senior agenda and demonstrating such a strong commitment to the needs of our senior population. As residents of the county and as an advisory body, we're proud that you've not only endorsed a senior agenda, but also called for actions to carry it out. And the county departments will now take actions each year, including what's happened this year in the, in the fiscal 13 budget, to move a senior agenda forward. And the commission is going to continue to work with the county and county council in advising on actions planned for programs and services now and in the future. So I want to thank you again for making Montgomery County a model of a caring and modern government striving to meet the needs of all citizens. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget that you can access a great deal of information about county services for seniors by going to the Montgomery County Senior website at www.montgomerycountymd.gov forward slash seniors or call the Senior Resource Line at 240-777-3000. Also, we have a new email address that you can use to send us comments or suggestions for future topics on our show. It's seniorstoday at montgomerycountymd.gov. And as always, thank you for watching Seniors Today.
weight loss, it's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org. County Cable Montgomery, your information station.